If you're fortunate, a deceased family member may leave you a large sum of money in the form of an inheritance. Now, this often life-changing cash can fund college dreams or even the down payment for a house. But more often than financial experts would like, an inheritance is spent on fine cars, fast food, and fabulous shoes. Joining us to discuss in our Google Hangout, we have Jake Wade. He's the founder of iHeartBudgets.com, but he also once blew a $100,000 inheritance. We have Allison Sentence. She's a wonderful writer in Richmond, Virginia. She she spent a $66,000 inheritance on basically nothing. And Susan Eisen, she's the founder of InheritanceExpert.com and author of The Myth of the Million Dollar Dish Rag, an effective and powerful plan to avoid a family inheritance battle after you die. Welcome, everybody. Well, hello there. Hi. Well, I'm really excited about this conversation. I think it's an interesting conundrum. It's kind of the thing, Allison, that before it happened to you, you might have had dreams and wondering what you do with the money. But you have your piece right here. I spent my $66,000 inheritance on basically nothing. But how yeah. old were you? you? This wasn't something that you received as a grown-up. No, I was, well, I was 22, fresh out of college. And what were some of the things that you, you spent it on? You said basically nothing, but you did have some things to show for the, the spending. Well, the first thing I bought was a digital camera, a, a really nice one. And then I started buying some high fashion items. Um, but, you know, essentially looking back, it wound up to be kind of like, whoa, what did I spend it on? I'm not really sure. I have anything tangible to relate back to. Well, one of the things that you bought, which I think is, is quite interesting, we all have the, the dream items on our list. I don't know how many people would put gas tank, gas pump leggings on their list of dream things to purchase. How much were these leggings? Oh, God. They were probably like, I think they were like $95. Um, I, I had a, a moment of obsession with some high fashion blogs, and those are by Jeremy Scott, which at the time I thought was one of the greatest fashion designers in America. So I just had to have them, bought them. I put them on, and I was like, I look kind of ridiculous, but these are great. And never really wore them out. <laughs> and you think, oh, what's a $195 pair of gas tank leggings when I have 66000 But it goes quickly. Exactly. It all adds up. And to the point where you ended up needing to the, use the camera in a different way shortly thereafter, but not to take pictures. Yeah, I had, to, I had my car, actually, which has been pretty reliable. It's a Toyota. Um, it needed some repairs, so I wound up selling my digital camera to pay for the repairs on my car. Um, it was actually, I think it was like an axle that was cracked or something like that, but yeah, a few years later, I just, I had to sell that camera. That was my first big purchase. And Susan, stories like Allison's, which she's so fabulous to come on here and share, aren't, aren't aren't singular. She's not alone in this experience. This is something that happens quite common, uh, commonly in individuals who do receive large chunks of cash all at once. Right, and in my book, I like to talk about making a with love list, which is a list of things that you want to give away or things that you want. You know, the best thing is to take a portion of what you inherit and put it aside and then have some mad money and enjoy the mad money, buy whatever you want, but put some aside and then get someone that's helpful to help you decide on what to put the rest in. Well, see... Now, Jake, you've become someone helpful to many people on your blog here, iHeartBudgets.net. Uh, but you have this post here, how I blew through $100,000 before I turned 21. So I'm going to guess that you weren't going to any finance bloggers during this time in your life. You're actually, no. oh, there you are. Go ahead. Keep going. Um, um, no, um, that was probably the furthest thing from my mind. It was mostly... Uh, I need a sweet ride uh, to impress the ladies in an awesome stereo system. <laughs> 
And so, okay, you had three years that you went through $100,000. So it starts with a sweet ride. You get the speakers. What are some of the other things that you spent the $100,000 inheritance on? Well, uh, after I spent almost 10 grand on the car, I put $4,500 into the stereo system, and then I just kept going. Um, I did buy my mom a Cadillac, which is pretty awesome. Um, but then I went to school, and instead of paying for the whole thing, I paid for half of it, pulled out some student loans. So I got, uh, there's another 16 grand gone right there. Um, and then I pretty much blew the rest at the mall pretty sure and Jake. i know what Jake we're going to get you on the phone but you you said it now Susan it's Susan sweet sweet Jake in his youth he's now very financially responsible but he he blew it at the mall okay Right. Jake, I was going to ask you, did you ever think about going to your banker, or going to a teacher, or asking anybody their advice, or did you just take it and decide to spend it all on your own? Well, I think while we're getting Jake on the phone, we can ask that same question to Allison. Yeah. Well, my dad, he's, a respons he's actually very fiscally responsible, and he inherited um, a little bit more than me. It was from his stepfather so my step grandfather and so he took me to the bank and we went and i opened a cd and the thing is i he kind of left it at that and i would dip into it even though i wasn't supposed to you know and if say, you're worried if you're worried about being a spendthrift the best thing to put it in is something that you can't get to so easily and that causes you a penalty i know those are the best things. Yeah, I mean, there there is a there was a penalty, but I was kind of like, oh, I need it for medical expenses, or I would create a lie and like kind of forfeit the interest I could have accrued, and then I would just take out the money. So my dad had a lot of faith of me in starting a CD and kind of letting me run free with the money, um, and then I would just kind of dip into it. It's probably like going on a diet. You think if you just cheat once in a while, it's not going to hurt. But in the end, it really does, you know, prevent you from losing weight. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's once a you're cheating, like, every week, every month. Yeah. Well, and it's one of those things where it frequently, you, you, Jake, I think we've got you on the phone now. You, you said you said you spent most of it at the mall, but you don't quite know where at the mall? Was it the food court? Was it in the stores? Well, um, I kind of went on a shopping spree of just new clothes um, because I hadn't really had much money before, so I just went out and blew it on a bunch of clothes. But I realized, kind of looking back at one point, I was spending about a thousand bucks a month just on the food court. <laughs> so I feel like I kept some of those retailers employed for a while. With that amount of money, it's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, and, it's, and, it, and Susan, it, it's something that we don't think about. Like, like tiny, like that Wetzel pretzel can add up if you're getting three or four every single day, along with an icy or a hot dog on a stick or, <laughs> or, or whatever, or whatever it is. That's right. You know, my background is in jewelry, and it's always best to buy something that you can have forever because it's something you can hold on to and pass it down to your kids. And then you can enjoy it, and it doesn't go away like food or flowers or cars. And so I always recommend that you, if you want to spend it, that you buy something of real value that you can always redeem if you ever need something later. Which luckily, luckily, Allison, you did do that. While the gas tank leggings might ne not necessarily have a shelf life, you did have the camera that you could you could exchange for yeah. car repairs. Yeah, no, I got a good deal on it. You know, I sold it to a friend, and he was willing to give me. You know, I feel like it was a fair trade, plus or minus a little bit of like friendship fee. So, like, he gave me a pretty good deal. You know, I didn't really necessarily lose too much money on it. Well, and, and the thing is, we all do crazy things when we're kids. It's just unfortunate when those crazy things involve large, life-changing sums of money. But they do lend us lessons. Jake, what's the number one lesson you learned from blowing $100,000 in three years? 
don't give me that money. <laughs> if I could go back, I would say, don't give that kind of money to someone that age. But but honestly, it's um, if you don't have a plan, the money is going to disappear. I had no actual plans for the money, and it literally went through all of it. If I had an idea of something I would like to strive for in the future, uh, whether it be further schooling or a house or family, whatever it was, then I would have actually kind of said, okay, I want to be here in five years. I've got this money. How do I get there? And made a plan and actually hung on to it. We have a comment here from our wonderful community member, Rona Barry Morin. At least I don't hear anyone say they came to Vegas and blew it at the casinos or the clubs, which that happens frequently <laughs> too. But we also have a question from her. So what should people do when they receive a large inheritance or settlement? I know, Susan, you mentioned first and foremost, find someone. But uh, the, another follow-up question is, well, how do you know who you can trust? Because frequently, when you're dealing with large sums of money, there are always shysters who are out there ready to take your cash. Right, most estates have lawyers or bankers or CPAs that are handling the estate. Even the judge or anybody involved, a friend of, of one of uh, a friend of yours, a parent of one of your friends, a teacher in school, anybody you feel you can trust can give you advice. And now with the internet. You, sh you can read about it. I wouldn't invest on the internet. But the main thing that I like to tell everybody is try to give things away to your kids and your family while you're alive. And that way you can really enjoy giving. Giving is a wonderful thing. And talking to your kids about inheritances before it happens is really the best thing that you can do. Oh, and Alice, unfortunately, your inheritance, your $66,000 inheritance, was from your step-grandfather. And like you said, your father is very financially savvy, very, uh, very aware. When he found out that you'd gone through the money, what was his advice to you? What, what was his reaction? I mean, he, he was a little bit shocked, but I think he was reasonable enough to know that, like, I, you know, I was 22, I had been given a lot of money and didn't really know what to do with it. So my dad has always been very understanding in that respect. He's not necessarily happy with me, but he does understand how it happens. So his advice was just kind of, like, create a budget for yourself. And he helped me out because I did, like, I eventually got into debt and like we set aside a plan and he helped me with that. So I think he didn't want that to happen, but he wasn't so shocked when it did that I just kind of like blew through that money. Jake, what about you? Was your family shocked or not surprised at all? Uh, probably not super surprised. Um, my mom knew that I was getting some of that money um, and kind of figured I'd go through it. And then there was other inheritances afterward. Um, so luckily I kind of learned my lesson and didn't waste. Uh, but she didn't realize that I was going to get the big lump sum came from when I got in a car accident uh, and broke my neck. And so that was the big chunk of it. And so I don't think they realized I was going to go through all of that. And so she actually walked me to a bank, had me put it into a CD and said, okay, lock this away, earn an interest on it, take it slow. But we put a little contingency on that account that I could withdraw whenever I wanted, and I did. <laughs> and so I don't think they were super shocked about it, but um, looking back, I'm sure they would try to give me a little more guidance, realizing that I could blow through that much money that fast. Well, and, and since what we're hearing is we are hearing stable environments where families really did try to help. I had a similar experience when I was a millionaire. I was 21 years old, and but my mom, she helped me with the CD. She helped me with that, but she also co-signed. And at the time, I was so angry. I still don't have access to mm -hmm. to what was what was left. I mean, you know, when I won $250,000 on millionaire after taxes, you know, after a, a, a couple of uh, cute spins, I wanted to have access to everything. And my mom said absolutely not because she'd seen this happen and she'd seen other family members go through money very quickly and she knew that it, was, it could be gone extremely quickly. Do you think it's a smart idea to have a co-signer on there so that you can't necessarily access or do you think that that can lend trouble in the long run as well? 
That's a really good question, and it could cause a problem. But, you know, we all love to have mad money. So I think it's a good idea to communicate. Communicate is the issue here. Talking with your family, talking before they die, after they uh, have made a plan for you. But I think everybody should get a little bit of mad money to spend and have a great time. And after that, if you don't feel you're responsible enough, let somebody else help you. And if you need someone to hold the reins and hold your key to, to the key to your bank account, then be be adult enough to know that it's really for your best interest. And I, I agree with that, Susan. That it's it's good to have a little bit of release. Uh, just if you have that amount of money, you, just socking away and staring at it, you're eventually just going to take it out and blow it all. If you allow yourself a, a certain amount. Um, and, but keep the other stuff put away. It'll kind of allow you to have a little bit of that freedom, that fun, um, but not make you want to go blow it all by trying to completely lock it away. Um, well, and also and you can't think, underestimate, you cannot underestimate, sometimes those large splurges can have large uh, 